Welcome to Lunch of the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark. We're in Mark chapter 4. We're going to be starting verse 35 this lesson. But before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Now, verse, verses 35 to 41 deal with Jesus stilling the storm. And this portion of scripture here that we're going to be studying is a picture of our Christian life. And as we go through these verses of scripture, uh, we're going to see how each event in this portion of scripture corresponds with our life with God. All right, our life with God. So in verse 35, it says, And the same day when the evening was come, uh, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. Now it says here, And the same day. Now, it seems that this day that is being spoken about here started either back in chapter 3 and verse 13. It says here, and he goes into a mountain and he calls unto him whom he would and they came unto him. Remember, Jesus went to a mountain, he prayed all night, and then he, in the morning, he calls his disciples to him, and from those disciples, he chooses 12, right? So that could be the morning that he's talking about, or it could be chapter 4 and verse 1. And it says here, And he began again to teach by the sea, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship, and the sea, uh, and sat in the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. So it's not 100% sure where Jesus began this day, but it's either, it seems to be either chapter 3, verse 13, or chapter 4 and verse 1. And he says here in verse 35, let us pass over unto the other side. Now, isn't this what happens when Christ comes into our hearts? He declares that not only are we going to the other side, which is heaven, but he fully intends to make sure that we get there. Right? When we ask Christ into our hearts, he comes in to our hearts and he, he gives us a new life. And we are sealed by the Holy Spirit. And God has every intention of us making it to heaven. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 20 says, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the earth. John 10 verses 28 and 29, we cannot be plucked out of God's hand. Romans 8, 35 to 39, nothing can separate us from the love of God. In Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Until when? Until we sin a big sin? No. Until we uh, hurt somebody? No. Until we uh, uh, commit some kind of terrible act? No. But until the day of redemption, we are sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 14, we are perfected how long? Forever, forever. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5, he will never leave us nor forsake us. And in 1 Peter 1 5, we are kept by the power of God. That Greek word for kept means surround. It's a military term. It means to be surrounded, to be guarded like a garrison. Like God has, a, has an army of angels around us, protecting us. We are kept by the power of God. Our hearts and our spiritual eyes 
are should always be toward heaven. They should our our hearts and our our spiritual eyes should always be focused toward heaven. Heaven and the things of heaven should be the focus of our life. It should be, but with I think with many Christians, it's not. This world is the focus of their life. And the things of this world are the focus of their life. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sits, on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Why? For you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Where are, we to, where are we to set our affections? On things above, not on things on the earth. Why? Because we are to be dead to the things of this world, dead to them. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4 says, No man that wars entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. That, that Greek word for entangled means to be like interwoven, like to be knitted in with. So he says here, no man that wars entangles himself, gets him, himself intermingled with the things of this world. Why? That he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. We're all soldiers for God. As I said before, how would you, how, you know, <laughs> can you imagine in a war? Right, you're in a war zone, and and you're down in a pit in a hole, and you got one of your soldiers there, and he's got a he's got a, one of those phones, right, and he's looking up. <laughs> oh no, my stocks just dropped terribly today, right? What's the president doing? He's he's taking all my money away from me. Stocks are going down, right? <laughs> what what is he? No, we're in a war. We're in a warfare. Uh, God, we're in part of God's kingdom, and, and and we are to be we are to be uh, His soldiers in this world. We're not to be entangled into the things of this world, right? We're not to be entangled in, into the the affairs of this life. Uh, do we live here? Yes. Do we work here? Yes. Do we do we watch the news and find out what's basically going on? Yes. But we are not to be intertwined in the things of this world. Your life is not to, you are in the world, but you are not to be of the world. Right? We are in this world, but our hearts are not to be of this world. Why? Because we're to be seeking those things which are above. Second Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 and 7 for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I've finished my course. I've kept the faith, right? Isn't that what we want to say at the end of our life? If God, God is merciful to us and, and, and we're on a, we're, you know, getting close to death and we know we're on our deathbed or something and, and, we can say, you know, that that I fought a good fight. I've kept the faith. I've kept the faith. I don't know how much longer I have, but I have kept the faith. I haven't. I haven't gone back to the world. I haven't. I haven't uh, had my life and my heart, my treasures in this world. My treasures. I've been seeking the treasures of heaven for years, right? And those things which are invisible now are going to become visible to me here in a short time. That's what, that's how we're supposed to live. Sure, we're in this world. And sure, we have to, to be here and to minister God's life. But until we get to heaven, our hearts are to be focused on the things of heaven. Every day we live, we are, we are in the process of passing over the waters of this life to our final destination, which, are, which is the shores of heaven. So he says here, verse 35, what? Let us pass over unto the other side. Jesus says, every intention, when he came into, when the Holy Spirit came into your heart, 
He has every intention of getting you over to the other side, to the, to the shores of heaven. But we have to go through the waters of this life. Verse 36. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. Now, it says here, they took him as he was. They took Jesus into the ship as he was. Jesus must be received into our hearts as he is, right? Not as we want him to be. Jesus is to be received into our heart as he is, not as we want him to be. Our Listen, our flesh is deceitful. It's deceitful. And it will want us to receive Christ and to fit him into our life and to make him adapt to some of the things that we want to hold on to and to believe. Our hearts are wicked. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, our hearts are terrible and they're deceitful above all things. Desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. We're deceitful. We're deceitful, our hearts are. And we want to receive Christ into our hearts, but conditionally. Some people want Jesus, but their stubborn hearts will not give up certain, certain beliefs and certain lusts. It is, listen, it is Jesus and his word only. It's Jesus and his word only, not Jesus and evolution. It's not Jesus and your sexual preference. It's not Jesus and your attachments to this world. It's not Jesus and abortion. No, no, no. It's Jesus and his word and us submitting to his word. Our hearts are deceitful. Listen, they took him into the ship as he was, as he was. We need, when we ask Christ into our heart, we need to take him as he is. Exactly as he, exactly as his word says he is. And, and we, listen, if there's any conforming to going on, it's us. We're the ones that need the conforming, not God, not his word. We don't need changing his word to fit to us. We're the ones that need to change. Listen, on judgment day, it will only be about what we did with Jesus. And, and, and did we humble ourselves to the truths of his word? Remember that, that phrase, um, only one life and it will be passed. Only what's done with Christ will last, right? So true. Only one life and it will be passed. Only what's done with Christ will last. And that's on judgment. I'm telling you on judgment day, on judgment day, it's, it's just you and God. That's it. That's it. It's you and God. Ain't going to be any, ain't going to be any music groups around, no basketball teams or anything or whatever your favorite things are in life, you know, sports or politics or whatever. Ain't, nothing's going to be there. It's just you and God. That's it. On judgment day, it's going to all be about what did we do with Christ? And, and for Christians, what did we do with Christ? Where was our heart? Where was our treasure? Was it here in this world or was it, was it on the things of God? Where, where was our treasure? What did we live for in this world? Did we give ourselves to prayer as he told us to in his word? Did we obey his word and did we pray and, 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 and seek, seek God in prayer? Did we read his word? 
or did we spend did, instead of instead of spending time in prayer instead of ten, spending time in his word or did we did we watch tv did we spend it on the computer did we do other things did we spend it with with friends there's nothing wrong with friends but need uh, listen where are, where is your priority where is your where is your treasure because where your where your treasure is that's where your heart is Whatever your priorities are in life will be revealed by what you do. We need to humble ourselves to obey God's word. Put him first. Put his word first. And the I'm telling you, the, blessing, the blessings will come. I'm telling you, I absolutely, if we put God first and his word first, the blessings will come. So it says here, they took him as he was into the, into the ship. And, and there were also with him other little ships. Now it says here in the ship and this Greek word for ship here means a large fishing boat. There were times in the gospel of Mark that we studied where it talked about a little rowboat. Well, this isn't a little rowboat. It means Jesus was actually, Jesus and the disciples were in a, in a fishing boat and they were getting ready to go across to the other side, All right? Verse 37 says, and there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. I think we're gonna stop uh, with this verse, verse 37, it says here, the waves beat into the ship. And the Greek here is epiballo, epiballo. And epi means upon, and ballo means to throw or to cast something. So it means to, to throw or cast something upon. So along with what Matthew says, in chapter 8 and verse 24, the waves were so strong that they were that they were going up and over the ship. Now, epiballo here is in the imperfect tense, which means that they were that the waves were actually continually hitting and going over the ship. So I mean, this is a, this is a bad storm. This it, this is a fish. This is a fishing ship, <laughs> and you know how big they are. And the waves were going up and over continually, this side and that side and this side. And and so it says here, and then it says here, so that it was full, right? The last part, so that it was now it was now full. <laughs> The ship was on the verge of sinking. I'm laughing. You say, Pastor Mark, why are you laughing here? There's a terrible situation because ha, it seems kind of funny that Jesus is sleeping in the in the bottom of the boat, right? And, and, and this terrible storm is going on and the wa water's coming up. On this journey of life with God, it is inevitable that storms will come. We live in a world that loves darkness and hates any ray of light from God. Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5, verses 10 through 12. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 12 Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. John chapter 15, John chapter 15 and verse 18.
If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. And then in 1 John chapter 3 and verse 3, First John 3, verse 3. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. All right. Now, listen, we have an enemy that will not allow us smooth sailing through this life. We have to understand that we are in the enemy. I said this a number of lessons ago. We are in the enemy's territory. This world is, is run by Satan's kingdom. Remember, ultimately, God is in control. But when, when Satan said to Jesus, you know, Jesus, when he tempted him and he said, all these kingdoms I will give you if you bow down and worship me. Jesus didn't say, you know, Satan, you're a liar. They, these kingdoms belong to me. He didn't say that. Jesus didn't dispute him because he was telling the truth. These kingdoms, the kingdoms of this world are right now under the control of Satan. And we are in his territory. And he's not going to allow us smooth sailing over to the other side. He's not going to do it. In this verse, there are two reasons why Christians begin to perish in this world. Let me read this verse, verse 37 again. And there arose a great storm and the waves beat into the ship. And number two, so that there was, that was now full. All right. Two, there are two reasons why Christians begin to perish in this world, why they begin to lose heart in this world, all right? The first one is this, that the storm from without, the reason why Christians perish in this world, why they don't persevere unto the end and stay faithful and true to God is because of the storm that is coming from without. Attacks from Satan's kingdom, from our work, from our finances, right? From our family sicknesses, death of a loved one. These are <clears throat> waves, waves of life hit up against the ship and then re they recede back and then they come in for another. So you get one wave of a financial hit and it goes back and then you get another wave of a family persecution and it goes back and then another wave of, uh, of some other kind of, uh, of, trial comes to you and it, they just keep hitting they just keep hitting the boat right if jesus was persecuted we will be also and if jesus had a had a disciple listen if jesus had a disciple stealing money from the treasury then we will have financial trials <laughs> right it's funny. Yeah, I, I, again, I laugh, but it's funny that of all the disciples, Jesus had the 12 disciples. <laughs> Jesus chose Judas Iscariot to take to be the treasurer, right? <laughs> and he took money. He would steal money from the treasury, right? Of course, if it was us, we would never pick Judas. We would keep him far away from the money bag, right? <laughs> but if Jesus had 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 this uh, the disciple stealing money from the treasury you, you you can expect financial problems also right if jesus's own brothers thought that he was crazy then we will have family members against us also but remember listen remember the trials are coming listen the trials from without are hitting against your boat they're hitting. The trials are coming. But always remember. Listen. Always remember. Jesus is still in the ship. Jesus is still in the ship. The trials may come. But Jesus is still in the ship. 
Second reason, the second reason why Christians bend and fold under the trials of this life is because the because of the water within, the water within. You have the trials from without, the, the, the winds and the waves from without, but you also have what? The water that is building up within. As long as you can keep the, the sea out of the ship, the ship has a great chance to make it through, make it through this storm to the other side. But when the sea is in the ship, this is a very hopeless situation. And when the, when the sins and pressures and attacks of the enemy come against the ship of your heart, the standard of the word of God must be raised up against them. When the ship, when the things come against, when the winds and the waves and the trials of this life come against your heart, need to stand, the, the, the standard of the word of God needs, needs to be propped up against them. If not, listen, if not, then, then they will begin to flood the soul. And all hope of safety is gone. If we don't raise up the word of God, listen, every single day, every single day, we need to raise up the word of God in our hearts. Because if we don't, then the things of this life are going to come in. The, the trials and the, and the pressures of this life are going to come in. All human efforts of rowing and bailing water will avail nothing against this inward danger. Sometimes, sometimes boats sink in beautiful weather by a simple hole in the side. This hole in our soul is caused by lack of prayer lack of time in the word of God, decisions that, that go against the word of God. Sometimes we make decisions that go against God's word that creates a hole in our soul. We are to be sober. We are to be vigilant in the care, in the care of our soul. We are to watch and to pray that we do not enter into temptations and keep yourselves pure and unspotted. How do we do that? Obedience to the word of God through the help of the Holy Spirit. Obedience to the word of God through help of the Holy Spirit. When you find yourself struggling within, do not attempt to save yourself, but call upon the one who is in the boat. When you, when you find yourself sinking, when you find that the trials of this life are a little bit too much, always remember, he's in the boat. He's in the boat. Call upon the one who's in the boat. He won't let you sink. He said, let's go to the other side. We're going to make it. We're going to make it to the other side. Doesn't matter what the storms are like, what the pressures are like. He's in the boat. You're not going to sink. You'll make it to the other side. All right, we're going to finish this lesson. We're going to finish next the, this lesson on the stilling of the storm. Next lesson. But until then, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.